What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking toad fishing, not hollow body frogs, soft body frogs. Everything you need to know, let's go. First off, I wanna say thank you to all of you uh, subscribers. You guys are amazing. Uh, Matt and I just last, just a couple days ago, surpassed half a million subscribers. It's so, it's really hard to put in words. You know, so much work Matt and I put into it, but it's all worth it. And we couldn't say thank you enough. So thank you so much uh, from the bottom of our hearts, from both our families. We appreciate each and every single one of you subscribers. You guys are awesome. So thank you. Today, we're talking toads. So recently I did an in-depth fishing video, in-depth video on frogs. Frog fishing, everything you need to know. Uh, hollow body frogs. We got frogs with uh, metal feet and uh, stuff that sounds like whopper ploppers. Talked about gear. But today we're talking about uh, something a little bit different. Something um, that I like to do with the advancements in hollow body frogs frogs that you can stop and they float and they have a, a metal tail or some kind of rattle in the back, something that turns a little boot tail, something that mimics like a weedless whopper plopper has really um, kind of taken over my toad fishing, but uh, you can't completely forget about it because these do have a time and a place. And so we got some comments and some messages about a, uh, a toad video. So that's what we're going to do today. I have four or five of my favorite toad style baits, and they each have a specific place uh, in the arsenal, and we're gonna explain why. I got some uh, slow motion footage. Hopefully you guys, hopefully the mic will pick up the sound, the different sounds each of these toads are putting off. But let's talk about the basics. So this is not a hollow body frog. This is actually solid. It is a solid piece of plastic. It has two kicker feet on here, and you rig this, I'm gonna put everything down below in the in in the video description. I'll link everything down below. That is the owner centering pin, and that is the twist lock hook, and that is a five aught. Most of these baits take a five aught or a six aught. You you spin this thing right in the face of that frog. Little trick: make sure when you hang it that it's hanging perfectly straight, and go come right around. And you're gonna rig that, rig that right through the belly, and then it's gonna be rigged like a Texas rig, completely weedless. The main difference, it's a solid body, so if you pause some of these, they sink. Some of these that are actually made by Z-Man with the Elastec actually float, and those ones are uh, standouts, we'll get to those. But let's start out with why. Why would you throw one of these versus a traditional hollow body frog. Well, tonight it's a really peaceful evening. Uh, we've had some bait fish out here flickering. There's not a lot of grass. There's some sparse grass. Uh, but for me, if I am covering water, I'm chucking and winding. This, this is going to allow me to cover a lot more water than throwing out a traditional hollow body frog. Twitch, 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 twitch walking it you know i don't cover as much water so i can't find those active schools of fish you know right now all the way through fall we're trying to find those fish that have congregated those bait balls uh that are actively feeding on bait and uh the more water you can cover the more chance you have of running into one of those mega schools and having some of the best fishing for for weeks on end uh, so that's the number one reason you can cover more water it's still weedless. You still throw it over your sparse grass. You don't throw it over your real dense uh, cheese or lily pads, that sort of stuff. Throw it on that sparse grass. But again, it's all about covering water, chucking and winding. Okay, now that we talked about why, let's talk about the baits. The important thing. So there's a ton of baits on the market. You guys know that. In every category, there's a ton of baits on the market. So I simplified it for you. Got it narrowed down to six baits. Six baits, you can really narrow it down to one or two, but I'm gonna give you six to give you some options, and here is why. So number one, this is the Rage Toad by Strike King. 
Again, we have that paired up with that owner. That's that twist lock uh, hook. Again, we'll link it down below in the video description. Uh, this is my number one go-to horny toad. Even though horny toad is its own bait, I'm going to call these all the, the toad category. So this is my number one toad. As you can see, it's got fairly big paddle feet on it compared to, let's actually show you the horny toad. It's real important when you guys get these out of the packages that you actually take and, and pull these little appendages just apart a little bit so they give you a, a lot of, they give you the correct action that they're supposed to make. But look at the difference. These guys are sticking together. But look at the difference in feet. You guys see that? This guy's really being a pain. I'll hold one out of the way. See the difference in size and feet? This is gonna be way more subtle. This is gonna have a lot more plopping, plop, 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 a lot more sound, a lot more drawing power. Uh, both are gonna be completely weedless. You're gonna fish them in the exact same areas, but this is gonna have a lot more kick. We'll get back to the horny toad in just a second. But that guy right there, the rage toad, uh, as far as colors, I keep it completely simple. Some kind of white belly. You can go with a completely white bait. You can go with some kind of gray bait with some glitter in it. This is all about mimicking bait fish. So if the fish are aggressive, I'm going with some kind of aggressive toad. Something with a little bit larger feet, something that I can cast out there, cover a lot of water, and really get that those feet kicking and making some sound. That disturbance, getting a lot more drawing power and getting those fish to commit. So that is my go-to. Now I adjust everything from there. Uh, next up, well, let's go all the way to the far end of the spectrum. Let's go the, the most subtle. So again, an evening like tonight, got some late thunderstorms, the water's kind of slicked off. Uh, when you start seeing those little tiny bait fish flickering, or it's just real quiet. You don't want to overwhelm the fish or give them too much to hear or, or spook them. That is when I go with the horny toad. Again, these feet are being a pain, but you guys can see those. Very, very subtle. I mean, this is like those little bait flicker in. You want something that's just really quiet. You don't want something too intrusive. This is the far end of the spectrum, the zoom horny toad. This has a time and a place. You know, you throw this thing out there and you're just creeping this thing along. Those little feet are back there kicking and they're just disturbing the surface enough. Just making a little bit of sound, leaving a little bit of a bubble trail. Uh, this really works, especially on those subtle nights. So, rage, rage toad, horny toad. To go completely the other direction, I'll talk about it right now real quick because we just talked about the rage toad. This is the rage shad. Look at the size of that single foot back there, that single kicker versus the two. If you are on actively feeding fish, busting fish, or you want to um, really mimic a whopper plopper or a buzz bait, this is gonna be the bait. It's a little bit different profile. Like I said, it's got that one big single tail kicker on there, but this thing moves a ton of water and this thing actually works really good subsurface. If you put like a little uh, little bullet weight on there, maybe eighth ounce, sixteenth ounce, something like that, just to get it subsurface enough, and you can just creep this thing along the tops of the grass, but under the surface, this thing moves a ton of water, and we've had a ton of success on that. So that is completely the opposite end of the spectrum. So the Rage Shad, then the Rage Toad, then the Horny Toad. So in years past, I've had a couple other baits. Um, really, I only have two more that I really want to talk about. Um, let's talk about this guy right here. <clears throat> this is the Big Bite Baits. It's a lot like the Horny Toad, just a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger body, a little bit bigger feet, but it has a little more vibration, a little more sound than the horny toad. So it's kind of on the other, the subtle end of the spectrum, but with that little larger profile body, you get a lot more casting distance. And that's something I really wanna to touch on real quick. Uh, with these toads, sometimes they're a little bit harder to cast. So you can actually go 
a power down than your normal, your traditional hollow body frog rods. You know, if you're throwing a 7.3 extra threat, extra heavy, you can get away with a 7.3 heavy or a 7.6 heavy, something that's gonna give you a little bit softer tip to get this thing out there and make longer casts. The other thing you can do is downsize your braid. Typically, I'm throwing a frog on 50 or 65 pound braided line. Um, sometimes, if I'm fishing around real sparse uh, grass and I'm throwing real small baits, I will go down to 30 pound braid. So 30 to 65 totally depends on the frog you're throwing, the toad you're throwing, the rod you're throwing, and the fish you're, you're going after. Um, but not too much of a tangent on that. I will link all the gear down below in the video description. But uh, between 30 and 65 pound test depending on, on the toad. But like I said, some of these can be hard to cast. So show you one. This is actually the Stanley Ribbit. I almost forgot to talk about this one because I had this on the, on the rod. Uh, this is that little halo. I talked about this last in last week's video, the swim jig video. It's that little like bobber stop thing that goes in front of your, it goes on your line like a bobber stop, but it goes in front of your bait and it just di it just deflects and, and goes through the grass a lot better than um, just your bait tied on. So Again, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. I'm gonna overlay some, some footage. But here's your setup. This is the Stanley Ribbit. The, one, the reason I really like this, uh, this bait, look at the feet. It's a more dense bait than the other really soft, flappy uh, baits. So it just has a different sound. All this is about sound and action. That's why these are my favorites, sound and action. Hopefully, I did shoot some footage. Uh, hopefully, you've seen some stuff overlaid already and the, and the audio picked up the different sounds of these different baits, but there are subtle differences. So that's that Stanley Ribbit. Again, 5 aught twist lock hook, um, and then that little, little halo swim bait, bobber stop thingamajig. I don't even know what you call it, but I'll link it down below in the video description. It works great for swim jigs and works really good for the toads. Like I said, you want to get subsurface or you want a little bit more casting distance, add a little bit of a bullet weight on the front of that thing, and you can send it. Just keep that rod tip high, and uh, you'll keep that thing on the surface, and those feet are, are doing their job. With that said, hook sets. When I'm reeling these things, it's not like a traditional hollow body frog. You guys know, you get bit on a frog, hit them hard immediately. On the, on the horny toad or the toad style baits, I like to keep my rod tip a little bit high. I get blown up, I drop, then I set. Just that split second difference gives that fish a little bit more time to get that bait farther in its mouth and you won't miss nearly as many. When Matt and I first started throwing these things, uh, we were getting about 50% uh, hookup ratio on our bites because we were just swinging. So slow down a little bit, keep that rod tip up. That way you can reel down and then jack them. So the Stanley Ribbit, we talked about that. The two last baits that I have for you are both by Z-Man. The goat toads, and this is the finesse frogs. Both of these are special, and here's why. They both sound amazing. Surprisingly, this is one of my favorites out of all of them. Throwing this thing, it is a little bit smaller. You probably have to throw it on a medium action. It'd be probably best thrown on a spinning rod. I had to downsize and go with a three-aught super line hook. You can see it barely fits in the bait, but this thing put off a ton of action for how small it is. But here's what's cool about these guys. They float. So unlike all the others, and unlike a hollow body frog, or like a hollow body frog, when you're working this thing and you stop it, or say you get a blow up and the fish misses it, you pause it, twitch, twitch. This is gonna sit there and float on the surface. It's not gonna sink. So the goat toads, uh, you do have to rig this on a little bit different hook because of the Elaztec. If you guys aren't familiar with Elaztec, it is very, very strong stuff. You could probably catch 30 to 50 fish on a single bait. But you just go with a standard EWG super line hook. Rig it right through the face. 
and come out. You're gonna pull it all the way down just like you would a traditional Texas rig, spin it on itself. Uh, and they did give you a pre-cut belly, so it makes it really easy to get this thing lined up straight on the hook shank, and boom, you are ready to go. So the Goat Toads, great sound. You have the Elastec, so it's very, very durable, but then you have the floating ability, which these other ones don't. And then this guy right here, the Finesse Toads. Uh, this is one that I haven't played around with a ton, but I wanted a smaller, more subtle bait, and uh, this is definitely smaller. It floats and it put off a ton of great sound. So I'm really excited about this guy right here. But guys, that is it. That is that is toad fishing. Got my my toad box. Um, it like I said, it's kind of collecting some dust lately with the um, some of the new frogs, the hollow body frogs that are coming on the market, like the Tekel, the Sprinker. Uh, Spro has some. That just some really cool frogs that uh, Spro has that really cool frog that has the toad style feet. It's kind of like an in between. That's a great frog. I've caught a lot of fish on that, and it, it's made of that same type of material. Super uh, resilient, super strong. But um, I'll link those down below in the video description as well because they kind of cross into both categories. But uh, toad fishing, it has its time and its place. These baits right here all have their time and the place. Uh, that Stanley Ribbit, it's a little more dense bait, casts a little bit farther, it's not nearly as soft, has a different sound, all the way down to the little Z-Man and the big Strike King Shad, the Raid Shad. Guys, hopefully this helps you guys. If you were on a frog bite or you're on a whopper plopper bite, a, just a top water bite in general, and you want to give them something different, something that has a little bit more, uh, a little bit less sound, more sound, depending on which bait you go with, you're in that type of fishery where you have sparse grass, you're fishing it along shade lines, grass lines, uh, over the tops of the sparse grass. This is where those scenarios is where the toads really, really shine. The weedless buzz bait. If you guys haven't thrown them, definitely give them a shot. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to a million. Our next goal, I don't know when we'll hit it. I don't care if we have another subscriber. You guys are amazing. Uh, Matt and I, when we started this thing so many years ago, uh, it was never our goal, but it has been as of late, and it's been amazing, so thank you. Thank you, guys. But if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys on the next video.